Hey guys, still here. Welcome to World of Warships. I just unlocked the module for the Des Moines, and in case you're not familiar with World of Warships that much, it has a couple of modules per ship, and lately they have been adding unique modules, which is a module that can only be mounted on a single ship, and can uh, not specifically upgrade it, but function as a side grade. This one is for the Des Moines. Now, the Des Moines has various different builds. There are all sorts of things you can do with this ship. I have mine set out as um, a bit of everything. So I have my A module, a radar extension. Importantly, I have the propulsion mod 2 up here. This reduces my, t my uh, time to speed up. And now with that legendary module, the enhanced propulsion or the unique upgrade, or whatever I'm going to call it, you get an additional boost to your rudder shift, but also an additional boost to your time taken to reach full power. Now, these two stats, minus 50%, minus 50%, they don't really tell the whole story. Because I find that it is not just another 50% faster, it is a lot faster. And that's what this video is about. I wanted to show off how fast this thing can accelerate. Now, yes, there are all sorts of other handy items in this slot. You can have main battery mod 3, boost your reload time, but at the cost of traverse. Uh, you can have a little bit more firing range. You can have your AA guns boosted, or uh, if you're going for a really wacky build, you can have the secondary batteries of the Des Moines upgraded. This thing means that you cannot go for reload or for range. These are the two most commonly used Des Moines upgrades. I have enhanced propulsion. And yes, it comes at the time at the uh, cost of radar or surveillance radar time, but that surveillance radar time, thanks to this module, is an additional 20%. So I'm not losing out on that much. Um, it is 43.42 seconds. So if it'd be 10 seconds or 10% longer, I'd be looking at about 47, maybe 48 seconds. Yeah, you could argue that 48 seconds is enough, or uh, could make all the difference. But I think that the ship as is, with the 43.2 second radar time, is fine. Especially because I'm getting a lot of flexibility. So let's have a look. See how exactly this thing can accelerate. Now, have you ever seen these uh, YouTube clips where you're looking over the shoulder of somebody driving a Tesla, which is set to ludicrous mode? Yeah, that's how a little bit how this module feels and it is not just moving the ship forwards it's not just the acceleration it's also the deceleration slowing down in this ship is also a lot faster and I can go from uh, all back emergency so that's maximum back or maximum reverse to maximum speed forward so full ahead flank in about 12 seconds and yes, especially the last two to three knots at the Des Moines take a bit of time to get to. It's not like you're going to go to maximum speed instantly. It's topping off at about 30 knots. Now, I just clicked battle, as you saw. Uh, it's not going to be any specific type of match. I just want to show off the acceleration and deceleration of the Des Moines. So I'm going to be operating down here on the 1-2-3 line, where I have a lot of islands and where I can make use of these islands. Because normally, the Des Moines is pretty slow to maneuver. It really depends on how you have it built, but it's not the fastest ship. Alright, game started. All ahead full. And it just speeds off. This took me to 30 knots about 8 seconds. Something like that. Alright, now we're going all back emergency. I know this is going to take me a little bit of time, but whatever. Speed, currently... 32 knots and increasing. Now, all back emergency. This is something that you could compare to the British ships, and the British ships slow down really, really poorly. They just do not like slowing down at all. Des Moines is faster. At least it feels a lot faster with that speed module on it. Well, <laughs> not technically the speed module, but, you know, enhanced propulsion mod. Alright, we're almost fully stopped. And now we're going to start reversing. Minus three and a half, minus six, minus twelve. I do have a speed flag on here, so that's going to change the performance a little bit. And minus eighteen knots. 
Now suppose that I wanted to peek out from behind an island. All I had full. This means that the engine is already going to be powering the ship. I am not going to be accelerating from a full stop. And this makes the acceleration even faster. Just look at how fast that speed's going up. Now again, you could argue that in that last module slot where I have the unique upgrade, you can have all sorts of handy upgrades. And yes, that is true. You're missing out on some range, maybe some firepower AA-wise, or just using your main battery. But I prefer ships that handle like this one. That handle with that extreme... Well, not so much agility, maybe, but at least acceleration. Now, there's a Moscow out there. Uh, Richelieu to the middle. I wonder what else is going to be out here. At least there's not too many battleships. I am expecting at least... Yeah, there they are, the destroyers. There's probably going to be another cruiser up here somewhere. Now my detection on the ship is 10.6, so I'm going to use that to get a little closer. I'm going to try and hold off firing at the destroyers. Because at 13 um, clicks, they're, they're hittable, but not ideal. So I'm going to try and use this little bit of agility and flexibility to maneuver towards the side of the Moskva. Get that guy. In the meanwhile, probably the Richelieu and the Bismarck are duking it out. Richelieu looks like he's... Yeah, he dodged the torpedoes. So far, I have not yet been spotted. Now, as for the radar, which you sacrifice four seconds on, most of the time, I find that you just um, have enough in the 40 seconds. The 40 seconds for me works fine, or the 43 seconds if you want to be exact. It's going to be down to your personal preference. Do you find that you need this module? Now this is especially where it's handy. I want to slow down immediately. I want to keep the island to my bow. I slowed down a little bit too late here. But with this module, I can quickly reverse. And Richelieu is now making a mistake by showing its broadside to the Bismarck and the Curve first and the Mogami down there. A normal Des Moines would not be able to peek out this fast. And I find this to be especially uh, going to be handy in Clan Wars. Maybe not so much in Ranked. Maybe not so much in Ranked, but in Clan Wars, absolutely. Because the ability to quickly move out of cover and start pushing at the opportune moment, that's something that the Des Moines struggled with to some extent. Even if you had the propulsion module, Yes, that helped, but it was still a little so-so for me. And now you have a Des Moines, which has pretty much the British cruiser levels of acceleration. And that's something I really like. Now, it looks like the Richelieu's been chased off. I can move up, possibly hunt down the Moscow. And I think that the destroyer at A is also gone. There we go. Arugamo got him. Okay. On to the Moskva. Moskva is still at full health. By the looks of it, he's going to be heading directly north of that island, in which position he will not be too much of a threat, depending on how the battle is going to unfold. Moskva has long range, so I could ignore him for the moment. But if I move here, there's a fairly good chance that he's going to have my broadside to shoot at. That is not generally something that I want to have a Moskva do. Now, let's get some rounds in on this guy. He seems to be slowing down. So far, so good. Alright, A secure. They captured Bravo and Charlie. We lost an equal amount of ships. Hmm. Now, in case you're wondering why the fuck am I running with a uh, hydro module, it really depends on who I'm divisioning with. 
If I'm running a division where there's a carrier, I will always pick defensive fire. If I'm running a um, solo build, pretty much. Damn, that was sloppy. Um, like this one in randoms. I'll just go with the uh, Hydro, because 9 times out of 10, it is just more valuable. You're just going to get more out of it. I'm being targeted by both the Moskva and something else. So there's a fairly good chance that the Kitakazi is still over there. Now let's start confusing this Moskva a little by slowing the hell down. There's the Kitakazi. See, shells are missing, and now I can speed back up. Fire set on Moskva. Slowing down also threw off the torpedoes. Alright, Moskva with its flat angles is not going to be a challenge anymore. So switching fire to Kitakazi, who is going to disappear behind the island. There we go. Alright, three for three for ships. Still go either way. Now, it's something that I don't do enough yet, this whole juking your speed back and forth, because I'm not used to the Des Moines being this flexible. I'm not used to this ship accelerating and decelerating as fast as it does. So most times, I find that the Des Moines is uh, just a bit sluggish in slowing down or speeding up. Now, it looks like Moskva is still being scared off. He might eat a torpedo there. Oh, no, they ran out. I want this guy to make a mistake and start turning back east. Thanks to expert loader, reloading the shells to AP takes virtually no time at all. Alright, let's get a couple of shells in. Moscow has acquired me. Switching away. At this point, full reverse. So that I can quickly duck behind the island cover here. Let's activate the radar. Kitakazi left. Inform the team. And at this point I'm pretty much out of range. Now let's use the <laughs> reverse for the moment. The Kurfer is going to be heading my way. The Moskva just completely placed himself outside the field battle. Um, Shima heading south for A. Yeah, potentially. He's going to come down here. So I may have to tackle a Shima down there. Now, the Des Moines was always good at hunting down enemy destroyers, but with this module you just get a little bit more punch. You get a little bit more flexibility because you can slow down and speed up so quickly. So all of that goes to avoiding torpedoes. Kerr first killed the Benson of the secondary. Now Moskva's detection is far worse than mine. So I should be seeing him pretty soon. There we go. Hello Moskva. He probably thought I was behind the island. Which was correct. I don't need to push out too far because I'm already showing too much of my bow towards the enemy. Officially I shouldn't even be shooting at this ship. Because at the moment it is not a priority. Yes, it can make life on the battleships and the destroyers a little harder. But it is not something that does critical amounts of damage nor is capping. Then again, this video is not so much to show off... Oh, very nice. It's not so much to show off the capabilities or the ideal gameplay of the Des Moines. I just wanted to show the acceleration module. Alright, doing minus 18. Let's extinguish that fire because I'm not being threatened by anything else. Looks like they have that flank covered. Let's start speeding up and moving towards Bravo to see where the other destroyers might be. So they still have two shimmers. And a Kitakazi. Now 
Now this flank is starting to waver with our battleship going down. Or, yep, there we go. That's one battleship down, and the Bismarck's not going to be far behind. Their curve first is still at 71,000 hit points. Their Ibuki just placed himself outside the battle, because from over here he can... <coughs> well, he might get a south win on the curve or the Bismarck, but anybody else can kill the Bismarck too. So he shouldn't be too much of a problem. The gearing is being contested over there in the cap. I don't think my radar is going to reach far enough, nor am I particularly interested in getting in a close quarters fight with a curve first. So far I have not been detected. Now I have. He is giving a lot of broadside though. Alright, full reverse. Let's try to get this island between me and that ship. Ah, there's the shimmer. This is where the Des Moines usually can do a lot of work. 1500. My shell arcs are generally a little floatier than his. So I should be able to dodge most of his fire. And yep, there we go. Thanks to the island cover, I'm no longer being detected. I'm going to just let that fire burn for now. I'm being targeted by three ships. Pop the repair. Heal party, technically. That's the Kitakaze. This game can still go either way, but I think the enemy might win it. Now, to be fair, my target priority here should not have been the Kerfers. It should have been the Shima. So, that was entirely my bad. Jesus, ow. At this point, I can no longer delay using my repair party. Problem solved, sir. If I radar, we at least might see where that enemy destroyer is, the Kitakaze. But I'm not sure if that's going to help us that much. He just made a mistake. He just made a mistake. He shouldn't have pushed out as far as he did. Because he's going to be caught between me and those torpedoes. Switch back to HE. It's going to hurt. Main turret critically damaged. If I can fall back into cover, I might live a little longer. If I can pop my heal again. Still have one heal left. Let's see. Lo Yang. Just put the Kerr first on fire again. Kerr first is definitely coming for me, that's for sure. Hydroactive, making sure I cannot get flanked or will know in a timely fashion. Although there is still a good chance that the Ibuki is going to pop out. Once again, propulsion mod. Very, very handy. Fuck, there's the Ibuki on my stern. Sorry, curve first. This is not going to work. Ah, sudden death. Okay, so now we have the Lo Yang and the Des Moines left. Des Moines seems to be hunting down the Shimakaze. Not sure if that's going to work. <laughs> the low Yang is apologizing. Alright, well, I'm going to just pause it here and show you the result screen after. Well, as expected, lost the match there. Still, did an okay amount of damage. Um, I didn't play ideally well, and that's mostly because I'm commenting on this game as I'm playing it. That's going to take away some brain power that you normally have to focus on the game. Because most of the time when I do these replays, I do the replay after. So the commentary after, instead of doing the commentary at the same time. Team score wise, uh, came third. Uh, that Lo Yang came first. Well done to him. Detailed report, well, detailed and credits are not that interesting. 
some damage done by fire, most damage done directly by HE and keep in mind AP. And as for credits and XP, yes, I'm running the premium camo on this ship, uh, the equal speed Charlie London for an additional 50%, and that gets you a nice amount of commander XP, which is already 19, so it turns into elite, and a decent amount of credits on a loss. Anyway, the Des Moines with this you enjoy playing. Hell of a grind getting to these modules, but once you have them, they're definitely, definitely very handy. It turns your radar into 10% less duration, and I, again, don't think that that is going to be too much of a problem. Yes, that 4 seconds could save the game. Could. It's not particularly likely to happen as far as I'm concerned. It's more of a, um, this might occur one every 50 games. Other than that, I don't really see that 4 seconds being too much of a problem anyway, because with 40 seconds, or 43 if you want to be exact, with 43 seconds, the Des Moines is still going to radar a ship for long enough for your allies to kill it, or for the ship that you're radaring to get out of range more often than not. So, I don't really mind sacrificing those four seconds of radar for all that additional acceleration that I've been receiving thanks to the upgrade. Then again, this is a challenge, or this is a change that you're going to have to consider for your own playstyle, because playstyles vary in this game, builds vary, and uh, as long as it works for you and it's fun for you, I'm all for it. Anyway, that's it for now. Just wanted to show off that new acceleration and the... Uh, well, I suppose you could call it the ludicrous, uh, ludicrous mode for the Des Moines, Tesla-wise. Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon for more videos.